Welcome to this Good Friday worship service as we commemorate the day in which Jesus was crucified for our sin and for our sake. Today we will hear the last words of Jesus from the cross, the words that he said, the words that he cried out, and the words that he prayed. These are commonly referred to as the seven last words of Jesus. This is a collaborative effort on behalf of seven United Methodist churches here in the Marietta area as part of the Atlanta Marietta District. In just a moment, you will hear from one of the pastors at each church. They'll read one of the last words of Jesus and then share a brief devotional. We recorded these a few weeks ago. We're so glad that you're joining us and thank you for being here as we gather together online for this most holy Good Friday. Will you join me now in a word of prayer? Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Your Son bore our sin in his body on that tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And may we, O oh God, may we heed his call to take up our cross and follow him. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Here on the cross, surrounded by people who have hurled insults at him, beaten him, and condemned him to death, Jesus offers a petition that might catch many of us by surprise. He asks for their forgiveness, noting that they do not realize the full scope of their actions. For most of us, if we were in Jesus' place, asking for forgiveness for those who had treated us so terribly would be the last thing on our minds. But Jesus is different. Here on the cross, we see the power of God's love on full display. Jesus is not here to condemn, 
but to offer forgiveness and salvation. The Greek word for sin is hamartia. It simply means to miss the mark. All too often in life, we miss the mark. We fail to comprehend the power of sin and evil in our world and its pull on our lives. We mindlessly act in ways that hurt our relationship with God and with other people. Jesus doesn't excuse our actions, but rather he sympathizes with us. In an act of grace and love, as he nears his own death on the cross, he prays for our forgiveness. Therefore, as we search our own hearts and lives, we are confident that we can boldly pray for our own forgiveness, knowing that our prayer joins with Jesus' prayer. Would you pray with me? Father, please forgive us for what we have said and done and for what we have left unsaid or undone, and help us to forgive one another. Amen. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. These words were spoken by Jesus as two criminals hung on the cross near him. It was different as I listened and talked and think about it. These two criminals, one especially, recognized Jesus for who he was and who he, his anointing was and the injustice that was being done. And he began to say, we deserve what we are getting. But Jesus, he has done nothing. When you hear those words, you think, surely the disciples would have said those words and not a criminal. Isn't that amazing that the criminals saw who Jesus was even as the disciples were hiding in fear for what was happening? Jesus said to this, to this criminal, today you will be with me in paradise. In other words, this criminal gave a form of repentance and because he showed grace, mercy, and love and respect for Jesus Christ. Today, as we go into our second word, let us remember we should do likewise and show grace, love, and mercy and not be judgmental towards others. Remember, there's someone that sees good in us, just like the criminal saw good in Jesus and Jesus saw good in him. Let it be so today and forevermore. Amen. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. Christ's third word is one of provision. Even from the cross, Jesus seeks to be our provider. Place yourself in Mary's shoes. She had come with friends and family to enjoy the Passover. And yet today the unbelievable unfolds before her very eyes. For she finds herself standing at the foot of a cross, her son's cross. This is nothing like anything she had ever imagined for this special child of hers. What, what had happened to all of those things she remembered and treasured in her heart? She remembered how the angel Gabriel had told her that she would bear a son of the Most High and his kingdom would never end. She remembered the night he was born in that stable and how she had praised God for his safe delivery. She remembered the excitement of the shepherds as they told her all the things the angel had declared to them in the fields. She remembered the magi and their gifts. And she remembered the words of Simeon in the temple as he said, this child of yours is destined to cause the rise and fall of many in Israel. 
Yet, a sword will pierce your soul. Today, her heart filled with treasures, shattered into a million pieces as her soul was pierced. But then an amazing thing happened. Jesus, in the midst of all of his agony, looked at his mother. And then he looked at the disciple whom he loved, and he said, Dear woman, here is your son. And to John, here is your mother. He knew the turmoil going on in her head and her heart. She would need someone to love her, someone to take care of her. Jesus made provision for her. Each Sunday in the Lord's Prayer, we speak of how God is our provider. And even from that cross, no, it is especially from that cross, Jesus is her provider. And Jesus is just as concerned about our needs as well. Our physical needs, our emotional needs, and especially our spiritual needs, they matter to Jesus. And he is willing to meet each of those needs. By dying and rising again, he gives us the ultimate provision for each of our lives. For he brings forgiveness and pardon and cleansing and salvation and relationship. Isn't it amazing how God prepares and then gives to us exactly what we need, exactly when we need it? It doesn't matter what is going on in our lives, in good times or bad. God is our provision in every moment of every day. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When times are dark, we tend to cry out, and I venture to guess that at least once in your life, you have cried out, God, where are you? When we cry out to God, especially in the season of lament, we are bound more powerfully to the divine presence through our need and through our weakness than perhaps through our joy and our strength. In the Gospel of Matthew, just before Jesus' cry of dereliction, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We read that darkness came over the entire land. The Greek term for land in this verse is ambiguous. It is unclear just what the term land actually encompasses. According to biblical scholars, it is equally plausible that the term land could mean Judea, or it could mean all of Palestine, or the whole Roman Empire, or even the entire world. In this widespread scourge of the coronavirus, in this local, national, even global lament, we might say the same thing. Darkness has come over the whole land. And in this phrase, we could mean Cobb County, we could mean the state of Georgia, we could mean the nation, or we could mean the entire world. According to Matthew, in spite of this strange darkness at the time of Jesus' death, somehow the power and the love of God was revealed to the Roman centurion. He was there near the cross, keeping watch. In this time of darkness, there are those who are keeping watch, looking to us as Christians as to how we are behaving and responding. 
While we are finding our way through this darkness by social distancing, by working from home, by online schooling, and by protecting the vulnerable, we need to remember that we too are revealing the power and the love of God. By altering our lifestyles, by giving up our freedoms, and by consciously making personal sacrifices for the well-being of the land, we are communicating that the lives of our fellow human beings are worth the effort. Purposeful sacrifice to save others is costly, and Jesus, through his death on the cross, provided us the ultimate example of this kind of sacrifice. As followers of a crucified Messiah, may we be willing to do what is inconvenient and uncomfortable to be a part of Christ's healing of the land, knowing that all the while we do it not walking in darkness, but walking in the light. Amen. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. These are strange and anxious times in our world, in our country, and in our churches. This is a holy week and a Good Friday unlike any other that I have ever observed. And as we pause to reflect on and to have our hearts moved anew by the power of the crucifixion, it is the humanity of Jesus in his suffering in this scripture that captures me. I thirst. This Good Friday, as we bear witness to the all-powerful love of Christ on the cross, for what are you thirsty? Who are and who will continue to be in our communities, in our churches, in our world, the most vulnerable around us in times of social distancing and isolation? And by the empowering love of God, how might we work individually and corporately as followers of Jesus Christ to quench so much thirst? Would you pray with me? For all who thirst to know that they are loved by you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these past weeks and this very hour, who will tirelessly work as helpers and healers of the sick, for those who are thirsty for the energy needed to get through the day, for those who are thirsty for rest, we thirst, all of us, for the hope of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. He cried out, It is finished. Did you notice that he did not say that he was finished? Did you notice that he did not say that he was exhausted or that he was defeated or that he gave up? No, he cried out, It was finished. These three simple words, these 12 letters, still have a great impact on all of humanity, even today. You see, what he was saying and what he was telling the guards and the people around him is that he had successfully completed the work he came to do. The word finished in this verse comes from the Greek word tetelestai, which is defined as paid in full. Often it is used as an accounting term which indicates that a debt had been paid. This is the essence of what Jesus came to do. He came to finish his work of bringing salvation to you and to me and to all of humanity. He came to pay it in full, to pay the penalty, the entire debt. Everything was paid in full. Jesus became the final and ultimate ultimate sacrifice for our forgiveness of sins. He completed his task on earth as he said these last three words, it is finished. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with broken hearts knowing the pain and suffering that your son Jesus endured so that we can be forgiven of our sins. We are humbled by his sacrifice. Let us never forget this dark day. Let us always remember his last three words, it 
is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. How fitting that the earthly human life of Jesus ended in prayer. After many hours without sleep, proper food, or adequate water, after being scourged and beaten beyond recognition, after hanging on a cross designed to suffocate him agonizingly slowly, Jesus used his last breath to demonstrate faith in his Father. He had spent most of a night in prayer asking God to relieve him of this duty, but God did not take away the responsibility. After all of his suffering, he submits to the will of the Father, and his prayer is that he puts himself back into God's hands. All the sin of mankind has been piled upon this one man. The penalty has been paid. All of our self-condemnation, all of our darkness, all of the chains that have kept us enslaved are taken into death with Christ. But on the third day, when our Lord defeats death and rises in victory, we can rise too. We can claim victory too. Free from those chains, free to enter into freedom and life eternal. So friends, let our prayer be, Father, guide and strengthen me, that I may, be do, may do thy will. Let our prayer be, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Amen. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble To think how you die for me I tremble 